I'm Chuck Malenik, I'm a reenactor. And for 36 years in the classroom, I used reenacting to bring history to life for my students. And to that end, I would dress in the garb for the time period. It's garb, not costumes. And I would try to have my kids feel like they were dumped in that time period and watch them kind of swim around and figure out what's going on around them. I would expose them to the music of the time period, which meant I had a soundtrack to history. I'd bring in the art. I would bring in a bunch of other stuff that would be more than, make the class more than simply look in the back of the book and identify the famous dead people. And now I'm not in the classroom. But I still have that room full of garb at the house. And I still have a passion for bringing the past to life, which is why I do historical reenactment on the weekends. And I want to document landmarks because landmarks tend to go away. So, to that end, I have a very pretentious sounding mission odyssey that I am on. And what I'm doing is I'm visiting each of the sites of Alta California telling the tale of each place while I'm wearing garb and you'll see me transition through the videos as I go from one time period to another or one point of view to another. Well, I'm covering the missions, I'm covering the Assistencias, those are spin-off missions intended to become full-fledged missions. I'm covering the Estancias, those are the ranchos that were created to support the missions and I'm also covering the Presidios and those are the fortifications designed to protect Spanish interests and later Mexican interests. Well, what I'm doing today is I am on my way to Mission San Rafael, the only Asistencia that grew up into being a full-fledged mission. I hope you stick with me on my journey. Against the Mission Hill, on an elevation facing San Pablo Bay, was the two-story adobe mission church, surmounted by a cross. Over its entrance was a square window supported by redwood beams. Above that, a triangular window to air the granary. Attached to the right of the church was the priest's building. Ten columns supported the covered corridor, along which opened fourteen windows and a door. The roof of the church was made of tile. There was a bell suspended from an L-shaped post. On the southern slope of the hill, to the left and east, several of the tile-roofed houses for the Indians could be seen, as well as one guardhouse facing south. Several springs and streams supplied ample water for the mission, and mud flats in what is now downtown San Rafael were home to ducks, which were an important food source. The economy of San Rafael, whether mission or assistencia, was similar to other missions, each planted crops of wheat and corn, although barley and beans were also important, as were peas, lentils, and chickpeas used in soups and stews. There were also vineyards and orchards, and San Rafael was known for the excellence of its pears. The agriculture was needed not only to maintain the mission community and the nearby Indians, but was used for trade and to help maintain the presidio upon which it relied for protection and to serve visitors. San Rafael maintained fewer cattle than the average mission due to its location, but it was important for feeding the neophytes. About a year after San Rafael was granted full mission status, there was a big controversy that took place, and it seemed like the newly created mission was going to end up losing its status. Padre Altamira, who originally was from Mission Dolores has just helped to establish Mission San Francisco Solano and he is proposing a plan that to dissolve missions Dolores and San Rafael and shift everything over to Francisco Solano and part of his reasoning was he looked at the dwindling population of Mission Dolores the Nephite population had dropped from like 1,200 to about 200. And 
Also, there was the growing threat of the Russian colony at Fort Ross, just a little bit north, and perhaps this would help serve as a buffer. Well, this controversy goes back and forth, and finally it's decided, no, all three missions get to continue to exist. There was a renegade neophyte, a native of the San Rafael area named Pomponio, and in 1824, there was a real determined effort to catch this guy. He was known to attack different areas as far south as Santa Cruz. Uh, he was known to kill. Most of his attacks were against native Californians. I would say largely Olani. But what ended up happening is he ended up killing a uh, soldado de cuera, Manuel of Varela and this really intensified the search for him and in February of 1824 uh, Lieutenant Martinez a corporal and a couple of soldados ended up capturing him around Cañada de Novato near San Rafael and he was sent to Monterey for trial and he was executed uh, the next September. In 1828, Mission San Rafael Archangel had a population of over 1,100 neophytes. As a matter of fact, it was becoming large enough that it established an assistencia at Santa Rosa, which was kind of overseen by the Padres, both from um, Mission San Rafael and Mission San Francisco Solano, who would go over there to conduct mass. With this large population, there were bound to be some who were discontented. And two of these were Marine and Quinton, who were friends. And they ran away from the mission, and they ended up gathering a force together. And in February of 1829, they attacked the mission, and they badly damaged the few buildings that were actually there. And the same Lieutenant Martinez who had, you know, found Pomponio, went in search of uh, Marin and Quinton. By the way, the Padre uh, that was at the mission, uh, Padre Amoroso, he ended up being saved by neophytes who ended up hiding him in the marshes during the attack. Well, eventually, Marin and Quinton are found and they're forgiven and they go back to living at the mission. Uh, Marin's name is uh, remembered in the name of the county. Quentin's name is remembered in the name of the prison San Quentin. After Padre Amoros died in 1832, his replacement came in, Padre Jose Mercado, and he was a Zacatecan Franciscan, and there were many of those who ended up replacing the Padres that had been there when the Spanish had been running things. Well, Padre Mercado had a different attitude, a different approach towards his charges. He did not like to be messed with or disagreed with, and at one point when he was very soundly rejected, by some native Californians that he was trying to convert, he ended up arming some neophytes. They went out and they ended up killing a number of the native Californians who were opposed to him. And this caused General Mariano Vallejo to kind of freak out and he ended up going to the governor who ended up having Padre Mercado removed. In 1834, secularization hit, and this was something that General Vallejo ended up taking full advantage of, considering he was the one that helped get uh, Padre Mercado removed. What he ended up doing is he got himself in charge of helping with the secularization of the mission, and he ended up immediately transferring all the cattle and all the resources to his lands. 
Vallejo, taking advantage of secularization, carved out a vast rancho for himself, Rancho Petaluma, from lands taken from missions San Rafael and San Francisco Solano. His mother-in-law received the lands of the former Asistencia Santa Rosa as her rancho. The lands were divided into smaller ranchos and sold to Mexican citizens who were helpful during the War for Independence. In July 1846, shortly after the raising of the bear flag at Sonoma, John C. Fremont encamped at Mission San Rafael. His lookout sighted three people in a boat crossing from San Pablo and presuming that they were messengers carrying orders to hostile California troops nearby, Fremont gave orders to have them ambushed. According to some contemporary accounts, he claimed to have no room for prisoners. Famed frontier scout Kit Carson and a pair of lookouts shot the three men who were likely civilians and uninvolved in the conflict as they had disembarked their boat. The mission lands were returned to the Catholic Church in 1862, but so little remained to be salvaged that the ruins of San Rafael were cleared away in 1870 to make room for a new church. A wooden frame Gothic revival style church was constructed in 1890. And in 1909, the native sons of the Golden West erected a bell and a sign near the sole surviving pear tree from the mission. In 1949, a replica of the original chapel was constructed with a grant from the Hearst Foundation, and it was based upon a sketch made from memory by General Vallejo in the 1870s, that being the only record of San Rafael's physical appearance. So the replica is not that precise. Okay, so far we have 20 of the 21 missions accomplished. We have nine of the Asistencias taken care of, a couple of Estancias. We have four of the Presidios done. And now it's on to my next stop, Mission San Francisco Solano. I hope you stick with me.